The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. TGIF, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Now five days a week on the network from 3 to 4 Eastern. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in this Friday. 877-927-6648 is the number to use if you want to give me a call, talk about this uh, interesting uh, market. If you can't listen to my show live, don't worry about it. Just head over to iTunes. You can pick it up as a podcast uh, anytime. And if you want to use your handheld device to listen to the show, I know a lot of people like to do that. Just plug those earbuds in, open your smartphone browser, type in TFNN. Dot M-O-B-I, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. Don't forget about Tiger TV on the homepage of TFNN.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live, and it is archived in Channel 13. Uh, with Tiger TV, not only can you hear the audio of the show, but you can also look at charts live right along with me. So, all right, here we are on this uh, Friday. We had the uh, Ben Bernanke, Jackson Hole speech come and go without much uh, fanfare. But uh, I'll tell you what, not too bad a day for the uh, market here. Uh, start by taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We'll update the chart right here. See that it is um, kind of at its uh, the middle of its uh, range today. I just uh, checked a couple minutes ago; it was up about a hundred points. Now it's uh, up eighty points, six tenths of a percent to thirteen thousand eighty-one. The Dow came very close to its fifty-day uh, moving average uh, yesterday, uh, rallying uh, today, but uh, off its highs. Um, you know, in the middle half of its uh, trading range uh, right now. Let's check in on the S and P five hundred. See if there's a little bit of selling in this index as well. Uh, same same thing. S and P 500 off its highs, but still up six percent. Uh, excuse me, six a uh, little over six points. Call it a half a percent to uh, 1405. Remember yesterday we had that kind of wave of selling that came into the market uh, late. No juice behind the selling. Fairly you know another low volume day, but the S and P 500 did close underneath that psychological 1400 uh, level. So S and P 500 back above almost at 14. 1906 right now, but um, some sellers in the market today. The, the market has been trying to rally. It's been kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, you know, we were up, and then we came pretty close to almost uh, break even today. Indexes fell way way off their highs, uh, started to rally again. And again, up until just about five minutes ago, we were up near uh, session highs. But uh, S&P 500 up a little over six points right now to 14.05. And the NASDAQ composite, let's see what the tech index is doing here. Uh, same situation. Trading right in the middle half of its uh, trading range today, up 15 points, half a percent to 3,063. Uh, it was a very interesting day for the market uh, yesterday. Again, volume was very, very soft. Uh, the percentage declines, we hadn't, we hadn't seen you know, volatility uh, like that for, for quite some time. But uh, volume on the New York Stock Exchange came in only at uh, 510 million shares. Uh, normally, you know, these days, average volume on the NYSE is about 700 million. Uh, today, we're tracking a little bit higher than uh, that 510 million. Looks like we could come in close to 550, 560 million today. So very light volume. Yesterday on the NASDAQ, only 1.2 billion shares. A uh, little bit higher today, maybe looking at 1.3 uh, billion. 877-927-6648. We're going to take uh, an early call on the show today from Toronto, Ontario. Talk to uh, Johnny, who wants to talk. Is that uh, Aruba Networks, I think? Yeah, it is uh, Aruba. Nice talking to you, Ken, by the way. I follow you all the time and uh, appreciate everything you do on the air. Oh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so, so what do you got? Uh, what do you got going with uh, Aruba Networks? Uh, you uh, own it? You want to go long? Yeah, no, I owned it. I took a, I took a chance and I bought it right before they came out with earnings last week. Oh, I think it was last week. I got in at sixteen ninety, and uh, it popped. And uh, I just uh, I heard you talking about that a few days ago, and you were thinking that you know maybe we shouldn't get into it right now. But I don't know if I should just hold on to it. It's behaving quite well, I think. If it's uh, if it's behaving well, you know, there's there's absolutely no reason to uh, to to sell. You know, that that's the the simple. Um, that's how I go about. If I own a stock and it's not, you know, 
flashing any sell signals. It's not, you know, showing me any squirrely type of price action. Uh, you know, there's no no need to sell something if it's if it's not telling you to uh, to sell. We're still in a market uptrend here. I'm encouraged by the market action so far today. There's you know money that seems to want to come in uh, from the sidelines here. Uh, remains to be seen what the month of September is going to look like. Um, you know, so you've got close to what a three point profit in it because you bought before the gap up, right? Yeah, I did, and I don't want to see it go back to seventeen or you know or eighteen bucks when I can get out right here. So I'm just wondering, you know, do you just say goodbye to this thing and move on, or is this thing have uh, a good so, so, future? Well, you know, I think it's a, you know it's a definitely a solid company. It's uh, rallied nicely off the uh, the lows uh, earlier this month in August. There has been some uh, some decent volume behind the move. You know, at the at the very least, Johnny, you could just you could take half off, just take half your half your profits. If you've got uh, you know 500 shares, uh, sell 250. If you've got a thousand shares, uh, sell sell 500. Just take half off, take some uh, take some money off the table. But you know what I like about Aruba Networks is that you know it gapped above its uh, you know what what looked to be a pretty key resistance level, which is its 200-day moving average, if you're watching on Tiger TV, yeah, and it's been, it's been able to hold, you know, it's been able to hold above that, which is, um, you know, which is uh, which is bullish at this point. You're looking at a company that's you know going to be able to grow uh, annual earnings by it looks like at least 20 percent um, over the next uh, couple of years, and um, yeah, this is a, a company with uh, with good fundamentals, and technically it's not doing anything wrong. So, you know, what? nothing wrong nothing wrong with taking half off here. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that would be my my, one, uh, uh, my strategy. One, one final little question I got for you. I know that uh, when you're picking stocks, sometimes you unload them and you take a little loss. Um, how do you feel when it just turns the other way the following day or the following week? Alexion Pharmaceutical, for example, you 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 let that go, and how do you like psychologically? How do you just approach that and just not let it get to you? Well. You know that's uh, that's a good question, and I think any any growth investor that's been in, investing in growth stocks for any amount of time, listen, we can all relate to that. One of the key the key rules I learned a long time ago when I first started at Investors Business Daily in the mid '90s is that preservation of capital is of utmost importance. You know, you're not going to be you're not going to be right all the time, and the market is going to you know do things to you sometimes that seems really unfair, and it's the market's job to kind of get inside your head. It's the market's job to make you frustrated. Uh, it's the market's job to, to do what the, what's least expected. I mean, that's that's the market for you. So, uh, you know, that's, that's that's part of that's part of investing. You know, it's not. Um, you know, I, I can honestly say that in the years I've been doing this, uh, uh, yeah, it's happened, but it's it's almost been the um, the exception and not the rule. It's not something that is just a, a constant thing where I'm you know banging my head against the wall. Sometimes a stock is not going to do uh, what I expect it to do, and if the market tells me uh, my my timing was off. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm just really thinking about protecting capital, and you know I feel confident enough in my abilities that more often than not I'm going to be in the right stocks at the right time, and I'm not going to get you know I'm not going to get shaken out. So it's a confidence thing, and yeah. also the realization that you know um, it it's happened before, and it's probably going to happen. Uh, it's probably going to happen again. I can be very candid about the the fresh market. You know, the TFM is uh, is a stock that uh, I hadn't been long. I wasn't long for very often, but uh, or for for a long time. I bought it in late July. It it, um, it was acting well. Stock was up uh, three or four bucks uh, pre-market when they reported earnings, and I'm thinking, you know, th I'm going to be able to hold this one for a long time. It's a big winner. And then if you you, you know you look at what happened to the stock a couple days ago, I said, you know what, this thing is just acting. Horrifically, you know, it had right. that that nasty uh, reversal two days ago, and I bought it at sixty two. I sold it at sixty, and I said. Sayonara. Good riddance. You know, yeah, I subscribe to your newsletter, and I recommend it highly to everybody. Your alerts are awesome, and uh, everything you do on the air, and also what, you, what you're doing with your newsletter. But I just wanted to ask you that. How does it feel? You know, do you, do you need to have the stomach for this thing? Because I'm, I'm absolutely. Just, yeah, I think you do. I guess. Yeah. Well, you do. I mean, you have to. You have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable with taking a loss, and you have to. You have to know that. You know. Listen. The, 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 I I have been shaken out of stocks before, and that's just the the, the types of stocks. Uh, you know, I I target. You know, companies that are growing twenty five percent, fifty percent, that are selling at high multiples, that are still in the early stages of growth. It's just part of the territory. I hear you. Uh, you know, what the other day you were talking to Tom about uh, fresh market. And you were telling him about how you can see this at 120 bucks, and 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 you're out of the stock. You just said, right? 
Yep. You know, yep. that's uh, what I'm talking about. And and this is what's getting to me at times because, you know, if you look at this stock nine months from now and it's trading at $100, are you going to look back and say, hey, uh, what did I do? Or are you just going to forget about it? Going to forget about it because the the price action this week has been – horrific. And you know what? The numbers were good. But I'm not going to sit there and say, you know what? This company is growing 20-25%. They delivered another quarter of great earnings growth. The CEO could not have been more bullish uh, in the conference call. Um, it, everything that, that I saw in that earnings report was, uh, was, was fine. However, the price action trumped all of that. Right. There were there were big sellers in that stock, and I did not want to screw around. So when it comes time to sell, I'm not saying, hey, fundamentals. This stock, you know what? I could I could still say, you know, I, I still think that this is going to be a good company, but I am not willing to, you know, sit through a potential pullback here that could be harrowing. You know, where if I'm in at 62, uh, and it goes down to 50 or 55, I'm not going to sit there and hope. It comes back. When do you, you know? revisit? When do you revisit something that you let go? Well, this uh, this chart has gotten so ugly that I can tell you it's it's going to be a, a a a significant amount of time before I revisit fresh market. I mean that reversal on uh, on Wednesday was one of the ugliest I had honestly that I have seen in the in the 15 years I've been doing this. I mean wow. it was as it was as bearish as as it could be, and it was bad price action yesterday. Closed up near its high. Um, it hit a high today of 59.45. It's back down to 57.63. So um, you know anytime you get um, um, you know, but that being said, uh, Johnny, if I get shaken out of a, a stock and it's just like you know, I, I I have to cut losses four or five percent below my purchase price, and then soon after I start to see signs that institutions are nibbling, and I can look at the chart and say, you know what, technically this stock is still intact. Absolutely, I will uh, revisit a stock. Uh, LinkedIn LNKD is is uh, is is a name that I, I'm still watching. It's been a tough stock to handle in uh, in recent months, but technically you know what, it's still intact. I still think this one has the potential to be a leader, but it's not ready yet. So if I buy a stock, I get shaken out. I don't worry about it. I'll, uh, and, and in some cases, I'll, I'll revisit it. The fresh market, you know, I'm probably not going to revisit this one for a while because it uh, looks to me like a broken stock. Unless we go in there and buy some fresh tomatoes. Yeah, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, you know what, like yeah. the fund fundamentals are good, and believe me, there are a lot of people that are going to stick behind this stock, but its price action over the past three days has just been, you know, horrendous. Oh, yeah. So, hey, yeah. nice talking to you. Uh, appreciate everything you do. Thanks uh, for all the comments, Johnny. Take really care, appreciate Ken. it. Have a good right. one. Take care. Bye -bye. All right, good way to start off the show, Johnny in uh, Toronto. But, uh, folks, i got to tell you that that is, you know, uh, a really, really important uh, conversation that I just had with Johnny because, uh, yeah, I was, I was feeling pretty good about the fresh market, especially when it's up three, three bucks in uh, pre-market on, on Wednesday. And you know what? I mean, there were big sellers. I mean, this thing got taken apart big time. You know what? I'm in at 62. I'm out at 60. Uh, minimized losses. I've got plenty of other names that are working quite well here. You know, sometimes you're going to get shaken out of the stock. It's, uh, you know, say la vie. All right, folks, headed into the first break. We'll be right back. Ken Shreve with you. Break out investing on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Taking a look at the U.S. dollar taking a hit today, down 47 ticks at last check to 81.23. The uh, dollar right now is uh, flirting with um, its recent low here of 81.22. So it's possible we could see the... Uh, dollar undercut that 81.22 area, which would uh, certainly bring its 200-day moving average into play at 80.60. So another weekday for the U.S. dollar. That uh, fueled a big rally in uh, gold today on top of expectations that we're probably going to see something from uh, the Fed at, at some point this year in terms of additional uh, stimulus or from uh, the European Central Bank uh, as well. But uh, the GLD right now, Spider Gold Trust, up 2% to 163.76. Uh, good volume in the GLD today. Nice uh, uh, technical breakout here over 162 uh, gold bullion today uh, for gold for December delivery rose thirty dollars and fifty cents, one point eight percent, settled at sixteen eighty seven sixty. That's the highest level since March. So bullish day for the uh, for the GLD and uh, crude oil up two percent today to finish at ninety six forty seven a barrel. Among uh, energy stocks, uh, noticed National Oil Well Varco uh, outperforming today. It's um, um, trying to break out here over a swing point of 78, 95, 79 thereabouts. It is uh, up 2.8% today to 78, 32. 
uh, National Oil Well Varco, not in a bad uh, technical setup today. Report from uh, AAA said today that national average gasoline prices uh, rose 31 cents in August, uh, up 8.75 percent. It's the largest increase for the month of August since 2005. The average price for a gallon of gasoline, regular gasoline, now stands at $3.83, up from 3.52 a month ago. An average, let's see, regular gas out here, 87 octane in California, I think is at about $4.15. $4.15. So we're probably about 30, 35 cents above that uh, average. Very expensive gas out here. Uh, anyway, that's some data from uh, triple, triple A today. And uh, yeah, more on the Fed here. We didn't, uh, so we didn't really get a whole lot, but I think the market uh, rallying today, and uh, you know, it's just a, a very obviously a tough market to be to be short here, where there's this perception that we're probably going to see something from the Fed. Bernanke didn't give any specifics about when it's going to happen. In fact, I'm kind of in this camp that we may not see uh, additional stimulus September 12th and uh, and 13th. I think a lot of it uh, will be predicated on what we see in the jobs report, which is coming one week from today. Remember, next week is going to be a shortened week of trading. Uh, the stock market will be closed Monday in observance of Labor Day, but uh, next week at the end of the week we'll get that August uh, employment report. So uh, we'll see what that data uh, show. Manufacturing data, by and large, have been uh, have been weak. But you know, yesterday we saw pretty decent same store sales data from many of the nation's uh, retailer that is uh, revealing a consumer that is still. Uh, resilient. Uh, San Francisco Fed President uh, John Williams earlier today told CNBC that interest rates could stay low for at least three more years. So the pledge right now for the Fed is that you know very low rates uh, through 2014. Uh, the San Francisco Fed President says that could even go out to 2000. Uh, uh, 15. So he also said that more easing, you know, could be needed to fight high unemployment and slow growth. So, you know, the story is that this economy is far from out of the woods, uh, stubbornly high unemployment, uh, very shaky job growth, uh, weak manufacturing data. Uh, I think the market's uh, perception is that we're going to see some form of easing uh, before the uh, end of the year. Uh, yesterday's market, you know, even though there wasn't any volume behind the declines, I mean, we were, we were down close to 1%. I think the NASDAQ was down 1%. There was a wave of selling that came in uh, late. So, Today's uh, today's uh, imp uh, performance is uh, impressive. Again, volume is tracking higher than what we saw yesterday, but still uh, very, very uh, light. Uh, yesterday we had 510 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange. We could be, you know, maybe at 560 million today. Uh, 1.2 billion yesterday on the Nasdaq. We might be 1.3 billion, uh, something like that today. But um, uh, not uh, not not too bad here. Let's go ahead and check in on the Nasdaq uh, composite. NASDAQ uh, composite. Let's see here. Last check, we were trading right in the middle part of the trading range, and uh, NASDAQ up 16 points now, half a percent to 3,064, and the S&P 500 is trading about six and a half points higher to 13, uh, excuse me, 1406. Okay, interesting uh, data from Eurostat today. That's EU's official statistical agency. The unemployment rate across the 17 countries that use the euro remained at a record high of 11.3% in July, the highest level since the euro was formed in 1999. Of course, the ECB meets next week, September 6th. We'll see if uh, we get any new information from the ECB. Stick with me, folks. Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be back in about four minutes. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing. Ken Shreve with you, 877-927-6648. Long weekend coming up. Stock market will be closed Monday in observance of Labor Day. Checking in on shares of Facebook. Unfortunately, down another 5.4%. Unfortunate if you're long, not... Um, Unfortunate if you are short, but Facebook uh, down 5.4 percent, a dollar four to 1805. Nothing but uh, problems for this stock earlier today. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and BMO Capital Markets both cut their price targets. Uh, B of A went from 35 down to 23, and BMO Capital Markets went from 25 down to 15. Uh, don't forget, Facebook still has some post. IPO share lockup issues to deal with. Uh, that was cited, I believe, by BMO. About 271 million shares were released um, earlier this month, mid-August. Uh, there's still 1.3 million shares that are going to come out on the uh, market, and there's uh, fear that that could uh, result in continued weak relative price performance for uh, Facebook. In uh, earnings news, star of the day here is Splunk. Splunk is not profitable yet. 
it does do data analytics software, sort of this um, sexy field in technology right now of, uh, of big data, helping uh, companies kind of manage large amounts of uh, data. It's not profitable yet, but top line growth is there. And uh, obviously, you know, expectations are, are pretty bright for this uh, company in terms of future growth prospects. Uh, shares up $4.17. 13.7% to 34.67, big gap up, you can see, for the stock today. Trading near a session low, but still a 14% gain. They lost a penny a share. That was better than the estimate for a loss of uh, 4 cents. Sales were up nicely, 71% from a year ago to 44.5 million. The consensus estimate was for sales of 39.8 million. So good uh, beat on the top line there, and um, you know, nice, uh, nice technical breakout for Splunk today. One of the funnier company names on Wall Street. Uh, the news not so good at uh, Zoomies. Uh, this is a, a company again. Hey, you know, you look at the balance sheet here. You look at earnings growth, sales growth. Um, you know, you don't see. Um, you don't see much uh, much wrong here. You know what? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna fix my chart here. Bear with me here. I put that back up in, in Tiger TV. All right, here's shares of uh, Zoomies uh, down almost 10% today to 29.03. Uh, good earnings growth from Zoomies. Earnings up 113% to 17 cents a share. Sales up 20% to 135.1 million. But its outlook uh, wasn't good, and I believe same store sales came out yesterday a little bit below expectations. Uh, this is a teen apparel retailer that caters to the skateboard crowd, the snowboard crowd, motocross, uh, things like that. Uh, has a loyal following and uh, still growing nicely, but um, you're a high multiple stock that issues a weak outlook, you're going to get uh, hit pretty hard. And that's what happened happening to Zoomies uh, today. Uh, another, another stock here, let's uh, check out shares of Omnivision Technologies. This is another earnings uh, story here, shares of uh, OVTI. Uh, I mean, kind of a strange day of trading here. Big move early in the session for Omnivision. This is a company that uh, does uh, image uh, sensors for smartphones. It hit an intraday high of 1785. It is trading all the way down at its session low here, uh, up uh, trading at 1629 now, still up 2.4 percent. But a lot of sellers in this stock that knocked it off its high of 1785. You don't have any growth uh, bottom line and top line. In fact, uh, earnings were down 72 percent from a year ago to 21 cents a share. Uh, sales were down 7% to 258.1 million, but you know what? That 258.1 million was way above what the street was looking for, 243.8 million. And the sales guidance was uh, pretty strong as well. Uh, Omnivision's image sensors are used in tablet computers, PCs, digital cameras. Um, it forecasts sales of 355 million to 390 million. The uh, consensus, and that's for the current um, for the current quarter, and the uh, consensus estimate was for 269. So uh, they were close to 100 million above what the street was looking for. Still not helping the stock though much. Uh, sellers in there, and um, you know, shares of Omnivision up 2.4 percent to 16.29. Take a look at shares of uh, Amazon. Amazon is a uh, current holding in the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. And if you want to get a uh, free 30-day trial to Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the home page of tfnn.com. Just click on the newsletters tab, then investment newsletters. You also find my newsletter right in the uh, carousel there on the uh, home page. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Shares of Amazon up a dollar 79 today, seven tenths of a percent to. $248.01. Uh, Lazard raised its price target on Amazon today to $275 from uh, $250. Remember, Amazon came out with a press release yesterday saying that the Kindle Fire is sold out, now makes up about 22% of the U.S. tablet market. Uh, next week, Amazon has a press event scheduled in Santa Monica, California, uh, where they are widely expected to uh, reveal a new version of the Kindle Fire. So we'll see what Amazon has to say uh, next week. Uh, some other interesting uh, movers today. Let's take a look at shares of uh, Middleby. Uh, volume pretty good in Middleby. They're known for their uh, ovens. The stock is outperforming up a dollar eighty-six today, one point six percent to one fifteen oh one. Big move for 
uh, Middleby earlier this month when the company reported uh, nice earnings. I love how it's been able to hold gains uh, nicely here. Technically, this is still uh, a very, uh, very healthy stock, uh, most known for their ovens, convection ovens, things like that. They make uh, food service and food, other food service and food processing equipment. So uh, Middleby continuing to show strong technicals in the market, and the stock is uh, outperforming nicely uh, today. You know, so we were talking to uh, Johnny earlier uh, from Toronto earlier in the program about uh, 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 the fresh market, a stock that I was uh, keen on at uh, at one point, but not so much uh, anymore. Let's um, take a look at a new issue. This is another uh, another new issue that's in a uh, similar business. Um, and it's called Vitamin Cottage Natural Food Markets, NGVC. So you've got Whole Foods, you've got the fresh market, and then you've got this company that came public in July at 15 bucks a share. Uh, right now it's trading at um, $21.51, down $0.03. Cents. Uh, they're based in Colorado. Recent breakout here over twenty dollars and forty eight cents uh, still looks very strong uh, another you know kind of a organic uh, play in the market here that um, that looks uh, looks pretty good with bright uh, growth prospects uh, the The price action in the fresh market this week has been uh, uh, horrendous I think the the, the, comp, uh, the investors were a little bit concerned about uh, sales guidance that might have been a little bit soft at the at the fresh market but uh, that, that company is still you know doing uh, very well in terms of earnings and, and sales growth and you know still a 20 percent grower so I suspect that it will be able to to come back but um, you know again the fresh market here uh, under you know quite a bit of pressure this week and is just a, a broken stock at this point that I suspect it's going to take uh, take some time to uh, to fix itself uh, technically so that's the, the fresh market vitamin cottage natural food markets ticker NGVC is uh, is another interesting one here a recent uh, new issue in uh, July that you might want to uh, take a look at take a look at uh, shares of Colfax Moving on, talk about Colfax. This is a name I don't uh, talk about very much, but it is forming a handle area here, and the stock is outperforming today, up 2.7% to 3288. Remember when I talk about a handle area forming, uh, you can see the the big uh, the big move that um, uh, Colfax has uh, made since. Uh, mid-July thereabouts. It's forming a handle area right now. There's a swing point of 33.89. So uh, this is a breakout candidate. Earlier this year, the company acquired UK-based Charter International for a little more than $2 billion. It has resulted in big revenue growth uh, recently for Colfax, which makes uh, fluid handling products. Uh, Charter, the company they acquired earlier this year, specializes in welding and cutting systems as well as uh, industrial uh, gases. So uh, Colfax, a breakout candidate here, watching this one for a possible move over 33.89. It is uh, at 32.88 right now, up 2.7% on the day. Um, take a look at Dollar General ahead of earnings uh, next week. Uh, buyers have been coming into this stock showing a little bit of accumulation here. Still stuck underneath its 50-day uh, moving average here, which is um, potentially problematic. Could be a resistance level, but Dollar General up another 1.9% today to 51.03. Uh, earnings are expected to come in at 64 cents a share. They report next Wednesday. That would be up 23% from a year ago. Sales up 11% to 3.96 billion. Uh, so this is a base building stock. Uh, still, again, is going to could have some problems at its 50-day moving average, uh, but let's see if this one can, can work on the right side of its base here and um, uh, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see decent dollars, uh, decent uh, uh, numbers from Dollar General next week. It is widely regarded as best of breed among the uh, dollar retailers. All right, let's take a look at shares of uh, Stratasys as well. I mentioned uh, Stratasys yesterday as a stock that is uh, pretty extended after a recent breakout over uh, 55. And, you know, I still maintain that, but I want to take a look at a weekly chart for Stratasys and, and let you know that sometimes when a stock breaks out, it does come back to its 10-week moving average, and that's what you potentially have going on with Stratasys here. I am concerned about this uh, this uh, distribution week last week. You can see the, the big reversal off its high, and there was some juice behind the selling there. But uh, this one could try to firm up in its 10-week moving average, which can give you an opportunity to buy a smaller amount of stock. Obviously, the buy point 
point here was 55. If you really, really like the company, and there is a good fundamental story here, uh, picking a stock up when it finds support at the 10-week moving average is a legitimate buying strategy. You probably just don't want to buy as much as you would have on the actual uh, breakout. So I'm still kind of lukewarm on Stratasys, although I wanted to bring it to your attention as a stock that, you know, it is finding support or could be finding support at its 10-week moving average for the first time after a breakout, uh, which can be a viable uh, buying opportunity. Let's take a look at shares of SNI, another interesting name here that um, I've had in my newsletter before as just a, as kind of a watch list uh, candidate here. Uh, this is uh, Scripps Networks. They're known for you know, cable stations like HGTV, Home and Garden, House and Garden, something like that. The Food Network, Travel Channel, these are some of their uh, stations. But um, uh, this is still an interesting stock here, holding above its 50-day moving average here. Outstanding fundamentals at Scripps Networks. Hit an intraday high of $60 uh, even. And there is a, a, a swing point here, right, uh, right around 61. So it's not far from a breakout. The stock is near its uh, session low after early strength. Uh, right now trading at 59.04, uh, still up 48 cents, about eight tenths of a, a percent. So uh, Script Networks uh, still on my uh, radar here. And you know, restaurant stocks not looking great overall, but uh, Panera Bread uh, still still one to watch here. It uh, actually today kind of acting a little bit uh, squirrely. The stock is down 1.4 percent to 154.83. Uh, this was actually starting to look less and less uh, appealing. It uh, had been in, in rally mode, but um, kind of a big decline for the stock today as it continues to hold above uh, support. Some of these other restaurant names are look like they're really in trouble here. Buffalo Wild Wings, um, again at one point. You know, a restaurant name that was looking pretty good, but then it really just started to lag and and turn into a, a frankly a pretty crummy stock uh, for that matter. And uh, you can see facing some resistance here, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings down two percent today to seventy six uh, seventy five, and of course Chipotle, which at one point was known as probably the institutional quality restaurant name, uh, that thing has just really been in a world of hurt since it uh, gapped down sharply in uh, in mid-July, and I know that this was a, a winner on the short side for uh, Basil Chapman over at uh, TFNN that uh, does the, the Chapman wave, and uh, so it was a good trade for uh, for Basil definitely, but restaurants uh, overall not not looking uh, not looking that um, that great here. All right, let's take a look at shares of a NetSuite as well ticker. Uh, N NetSuite, similar business to Salesforce.com. They are a uh, provider of on-demand customer relationship management software, CRM software. Um, a good day of outperformance here, up 2.6 percent today to 56.82. Remember when night trading had those uh, those problems, those trading glitches uh, back late July, early August? Uh, NetSuite was definitely involved in that. You can see this big wild uh, day of trading right here, but it has firmed up uh, nicely over the past uh, few weeks and still holding above its 50-day um, moving average here. NetSuite has uh, tremendous uh, growth prospects. This is uh, still uh, a name, I think, that has uh, good potential here. Uh, NetSuite is uh, this year expected to grow annual earnings uh, by 47% to $0.22 cents a share. Next year, earnings should be up 59% to $0.35 cents a share. So uh, when you've got growth like that and you've got you know, generally strong technical action, this is, uh, this is definitely a name uh, to watch. Mentioned shares of uh, LinkedIn earlier. Let's check in on shares of LinkedIn. Still can't rule out a breakout here. Over 113 bucks a share. LinkedIn right now is trading at 107, so it does have to prove itself uh, a little bit more. Only down 24 cents today. So uh, LinkedIn still on my watch list here as a potential emerging leader. All right, folks, headed into the final break. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN, TGIF. We will be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Case Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, completely free of charge, will even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free trial to market insights and pay nothing and keep tom's free book as a gift from us this offer is only valid for new subscribers we've only extended this offer once before and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks so act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active more volatile market once traders return from their august vacations all the details are on the front page of tfnn.com sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of tom's best-selling book today Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone. As we head into the close here, indices uh, holding on to gains uh, pretty well. We've got the Dow up close to 100 points, about 99 points now, eight-tenths of a percent to 13,100. Uh, Dow is actually outperforming a little bit uh, today. The NASDAQ Composite Tech Index up 19 points, six-tenths of a percent to 3,067. And the S&P 500 up uh, pretty close to eight points, six-tenths of a percent to 1,407. Not a bad day at all for uh, stocks. Volume on the uh, NASDAQ tracking about, uh, oh, I don't know, what is it, uh, maybe 5%, um, uh, 
5% higher than what we saw yesterday on the NASDAQ, which was, uh, which was very, very light. Uh, volume on the New York Stock Exchange today tracking about 10% higher than what we saw yesterday. So, you know, we're probably looking at you know, 550 million shares on the NYSE today, maybe 1.25, 1 1.3 billion on the NASDAQ. So still very, very uh, light volume. Mentioned LinkedIn uh, before we headed into the last uh, break as uh, still a stock with a um, with a potential to be a market leader here. It's really not going to get going until new money really starts to come in from the from the sidelines with volume so light in the market. Uh, it's not clear that that's happening uh, yet. Remains to be seen. You hear a lot that the month of September is uh, typically a soft month for stocks. And I think I went back over the past uh, six uh, Septembers, um, September 2011, 2010, 9, 8, and uh, about half the time stocks were up in September, including uh, September 2010, where the NASDAQ was up some 11 or 12 percent. So can't automatically say that September is going to be a rough month for stocks. It may end up uh, may end up being that way, but uh, then again, it might not, and we we actually could see some uh, some new money come in from the uh, from the sidelines here. So another stock that has potential here is uh, Zillow. Uh, Zillow is a provider of online real estate uh, services. That's that website where you can, you know, punch in your address and it'll give you an approximate value for your home. Uh, but Zillow, uh, you know, Pandora Media came out yesterday uh, making good inroads in terms of monetizing mobile. That really is uh, something that Facebook is trying to do. Street not convinced that they're going to be able to do that. But Zillow is another uh, company during recent earnings reports uh, really touting their mobile uh, success. In fact, they said uh, more homes now. Uh, are viewed not on Zillow.com, but on mobile uh, devices. So Zillow is another uh, company monetizing uh, mobile, as is LinkedIn. But shares of Zillow working on five straight up days here, getting close to a potential breakout over 44. Shares were recently trading around 41.51, up 33 cents uh, today. So this is another stock that has, um, that has uh, potential here. Coming up uh, next week, economic data. Shortened week of trading again. Labor Day is Monday. Stock market will be closed. We've got the ISM Manufacturing Index on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, weekly jobless claims. We've got the ADP employment change, challenger job cuts, and then, of course, the ever-important non-farm payroll report for August on uh, Friday. So we'll see We'll see what, uh, what all that information has. Uh, obviously, the jobs report uh, Friday. Uh, investors and the Fed will be looking at that uh, very closely. On Tuesday, uh, Francesca's Holdings will be out with uh, earnings. The stock uh, continues to trade well ahead of uh, earnings. Uh, we'll see uh, We'll see what the numbers uh, look like. Shares of uh, Francesca is right now down 46 cents to 35.28. Recent breakout over 32.59, uh, so still holding above the uh, buy point. Uh, Quarterly profit is seen rising 60% to $0.24 cents a share, with sales up 39% to $71.1 million. And then uh, Ulta Beauty is going to be out with earnings uh, next week as well. So a couple, uh, couple of retailers here. We'll check in on Ulta before uh, we close up shop here. Shares of Ulta up $0.36 cents to $93.99 ahead of its um, earnings report next week. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. Hope you have a great long weekend. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll be back uh, Tuesday with another edition of Breakout Investing. Take care.